What do you think of when you hear the word adventure? Do you think of something exciting, daring, scary? How many of us would use those same words to describe our lives? The definition of an adventure is an unusual or exciting, typically hazardous experience. And I know some of you can think of times in your lives where you've had those kind of experiences. I know I can. When I look back on my life, I can tell you that it has been one big, unpredictable adventure. And today I'm going to share a snippet of my journey with you. Let's go back all the way to high school. In high school, I went to a school called Presentation College Windsor, and it was a girls' school located just off Chapel Street, and we had our brother school on the opposite side of the road. Teachers would describe me probably as a quiet student. I stuck to the rules. I only wore PE uniform on the day we were meant to wear PE uniform. I handed in my homework on time. I didn't talk in class. I was a quiet achiever. And even the friendship circles I hung around, we were all the diligent students who did the work, who put effort in. And yeah, we do, they were just my friends. And in school, I thrived in the science and math subjects. See, some people, when they get to year 11 and 12, they have a clear idea of the career they want to go into but not me. I remember going to a open day at Monash University in year 11 and seeing some rocks and I went over and they were telling me about geology and I thought, oh, geology, I mean, I like rocks. I guess I'll be a geologist. And so I ended up studying a science degree at Monash University. So I went from year 12 to university and let me tell you, my first year at university was the worst. I hated it. I didn't know many people. You're literally sitting in a lecture theatre full with 600 other strangers that you just don't know. And you feel like a needle in a haystack. And so I really struggled with my first year of uni. It was only until I got to my second year of uni that things started to change. I started to enjoy the university experience. I started specialising in some subjects that I found interesting. And at the end of three years, I ended up majoring in geology and environmental science and sustainability. In fact, I loved environmental science so much that I ended up staying another year to do an honours degree. And during this honours degree, I wrote a thesis. And my thesis was on magnetic termite mounds. You may have seen them, you may have seen them in books. I had never heard of them or seen them until I wrote a thesis on them. But yeah, I wrote this thesis on them and with my professor and a few others, we traveled up to Darwin and I plugged some instruments into this magnetic termite mound and took some measurements. And by the end of that year, I had written a thesis on magnetic termite mounds. That was one of the most demanding years of my life, um, but also one of the most exciting years too. So after, after I wrote this thesis, I ended up graduating at the end of 2010. And when I graduated, that we were actually in the middle of a global economic recession. And everyone that had studied my degree in environmental science, it was really difficult for them to get a job. And so all of my friends were finding that it was just really hard to find jobs. And at that time, I was kind of wondering what's next, applying for jobs, not being able to get them. My professor who supervised my honours project offered me a job as a research assistant and he was a great supervisor. So I thought, yeah, why not? So for the next two years, I worked as a research assistant for the Department of Earth, Atmosphere and Science at Monash University. And let me tell you, it was the best job. I got to work with passionate people. I got to travel to some of the most remote places to do research. I remember there was one time we actually went into a helicopter and we were over central Australia and just seeing the red earth. It was amazing. And I was getting paid that whole time because that was my job. <laughs> I was constantly learning and I loved every moment of it. But two years into this job, even though I loved it so much, I knew that there was something more. Something was missing. 
And at this time, I had begun to look into doing some further study. And I thought about perhaps doing international development. My sister had done a year in South Korea. She was a volunteer English teacher. And she said that you should probably do something similar, Rose, if you want to find out um, what this, what, if you like living overseas. And so I thought, yeah, yeah, I'll do something. And so as I was trying to figure out what the future held and what my passions were, there was a humanitarian organization called ADRA. And they were offering placements for passionate young people to do an internship in one of their overseas offices. So I applied and a couple of months later, I think within the month, I got noticed that I got into their program. I remember just thinking I was scared because living alone as a 23 year old in a foreign country would be scary. But I knew that God had opened this door and I needed faith to walk through it. So I ended up moving overseas to Laos, which is a country in Southeast Asia, just above Thailand. And I remember I moved there in 2013, but in 2012, I had been there on a backpacking trip. And I remember going to the capital city, Vientiane, and thinking that it was such a boring city that I was never going to go back. <laughs> um, but then I ended up living there and it was actually not a bad city. But let me tell you that living overseas is hard. You might see some of those Instagram influencers that have their overseas lives. They're eating pineapples every day and all this tropical fruit and taking pictures at the beach with these crystal blue water. But that's really not what it's like. It's not as glamorous as Instagram makes it out to be. It was hard. You're away from your family, your friends, everything familiar. There are new cultural norms, new food. They're driving on the other side of the road. It's really, really hard. But I learned to trust God during this year. And when I came back from Laos, it confirmed for me that I didn't want to do international development because at that time I felt it just wasn't the right fit. So I went back to my old job in science, still trying to figure out what the future was going to hold. It was during this year that I worked closely with ADRA, speaking about the work that they were doing in Victoria. So ADRA was the same organization I went overseas with. They are also present here in Victoria. So I started doing some volunteer work with them. And during this year, people that I would come into contact with would say, Rose, I think you should consider studying ministry and theology. I was like, nah, because when I thought of pastors, I didn't think that I fit the stereotype or what I perceived to be the stereotype. And so... At the same time, going through this journey of not knowing what to do, I ended up applying for a whole lot of jobs. And one of those jobs happened to be with the Australian Defence Force. And I wasn't going to be one of those combat personnel. But what I did apply for was to be one of those people on computers behind the desk, kind of doing some data stuff and some. Yeah, I just I just wanted to be not on the front line, but doing something behind and um I applied, I ended up um, going through quite a few of the rounds of the testing to the last round where they invited me to Canberra to do the final interview. And it was during this time that I just couldn't shake the call to study ministry and theology. I remember re wrestling really hard with what I was going to do. And I remember being at the gym one day and I was on the cross trainer. And I was just there doing some exercise and I was listening to this sermon and this preacher started to say, we need more young pastors. And I just remember at that moment, I was so convicted and I just started crying. So there's me at the gym on this cross trainer crying because I felt like God was really telling me, Rose, I want you to go and be a pastor. And I remember calling up my sister and being like, I think God's telling me that I need to go and study ministry and theology. And she was like, oh, that's weird that kind of makes sense. But at the same time, so I felt this call to ministry, but I was still in this valley of indecision because I had also applied for the defense force and kind of got through to the last round of testing. And, but at the same time felt this call from God to go study ministry and theology. So which one was I going to choose? And so I started asking people and some were saying, Rose, go to Canberra because no one ministers to those people there. And other people were saying, go to study ministry and theology. And I was really praying for a sign for which way to go. And I didn't get one. And at the end of the day, I had to make a choice. Because I thought going to Canberra, working at the Defence Force would give me a relatively stable job. 
a stable income, and a relatively predictable life as a public servant. But going to Avondale, going to study ministry and theology, I didn't know what that would hold. And so I decided that I needed to take the, the, I needed to take the path that needed more faith, and that was to go and study ministry and theology. And I decided to take the path that needed more faith because it meant that I couldn't control the next step. And this was scary, but also very exciting. So for the next two years, I went to study ministry and theology, and these were a crazy two years. Most of that time was spent in the library. But during this time, I had the opportunity to go overseas. So I actually got to go to Mexico and the Cook Islands. And you'll see in the photo that Pastor Jono was there with me too. And we had some good times there. When I was studying ministry at theology at my college, which is called Avondale College, I didn't even know how I was going to pay for my dormitory fees because I was staying on campus. But I kept getting these scholarships to the point where 85% of my total dorm fees were covered. And I praise God for that because I didn't have the money in the bank to pay for my fees, but I knew that he wanted me there because he just kept providing and he kept opening these doors one step at a time. And you know, I couldn't see the whole staircase of my life. Even thinking back to when I was in year 12, even thinking back to when I was studying science or when I had my previous job, I couldn't see how things were gonna play out. And you know what? I still can't see how things will play up, play out into the future. But God, you know, he opens doors and he invited me to take a step out in faith, but one step at a time. And so now I find myself here back in Melbourne doing a job I love. I work with great people. I have great opportunities and I can see how God is moving and working all around. And it's, It's amazing. It's really, truly amazing. And sometimes I think we're like that kid in the meme where he has one foot on the ground and the other foot like four steps up. We want to try and get to the end straight away, not realizing that there are steps we need to take in the middle that will help us get to that end point. And looking back on life, I can see how each step was preparing me for the next step. And it has been one big adventure. And life with God is really exciting. In the Bible, we find a letter written by this guy, Paul, to some people in a town called Ephesus. In this letter, which we now call the book of Ephesians, he's praying for the people. How many of you have prayed before? And what kind of things come out in a prayer? For Paul, like many of us, he expressed his worries and his ambitions but we also find him praising God. Through Paul's life, he was able to experience firsthand God's goodness towards him. And we find him ending his prayer with these words found in Ephesians 3 verse 20. Now all glory to God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. So what is Paul saying? He's saying, if you can ask it, if you can think it, he can do more. Life is a roller coaster. Life is dynamic. It's unpredictable. Last year, no one could have predicted that our lives would be turned upside down. Life with God, it's an adventure. Even though you go through some trying times, If you do life with God, you know that he's by your side. God has taken me to places I could have never dreamed of and given me experiences which have shaped me into the person I am today. And he's given me memories to last a lifetime. I don't know how this year has been for you or your families, but this year has been one of the most challenging years for me. And while we look forwards and upwards... I want to remind you, don't forget to look backwards to see where you've come from. See how the journey of your own life has shaped you into who you are today. I want you to spend some intentional time reflecting on how far you've come and the adventures which have grown and stretched you. And as you reflect, you will soon come to realize that you are more resilient than you think. Keep pressing on, friends. 
together with God leading and guiding, we'll be able to get through this weird year of 2020. May God bless you.